Lucid's potatoes. With all of us collectively spending more and more time in front of illuminated screens of all shapes and sizes, I wanted to share an update of what's on my iPhone as I recently upgraded to the 12 Pro Max, as well as how I use my dear phone to work for me and not against me. While I was researching for this video, my boyfriend sent me this brilliant article by Coach Tony from Better Humans. My biggest takeaway from this article is that you are the boss and your phone is your tool. The problem isn't the smartphone themselves. To be fair, I have many, 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 many thoughts on this, but that'll be a video for another time. The problem is our relationship with it. Growing up in an era of tech innovation from clunky Nokia phones that had the best game ever to razor thin flip phones to sidekicks that had the swivel flip screen and the keyboard. I think everything happened so quickly that I never truly questioned or thought about my relationship with my phone. And I was struggling to make sense of it for the longest time until I started thinking of it from the perspective of first principles. What is a phone and why does it exist? In today's video, we'll go over how I organize my apps, tips on how I use my phone to work for me, and how I've developed a healthier relationship with it over time. Starting screen recording in three, two, one, bing! <laughs> okay, I'll scoot over a bit. Before we start flipping through my screens and talking through all the apps, I wanna share two creme de la cremest of the features that I use to help me be the boss and my phone my tool. Since we already talked about Do Not Disturb in the previous video, I'll just go over it really quickly. It's this little moon icon in your control center that stops any and all notification, texts, phone calls, anything from notifying you unless you go into the settings and change whether you want to allow calls from favorites, no one or everyone. You can also allow repeated calls. So if someone calls you twice, the phone will be able to come through. So the purpose of this and why I find this so helpful is that when you want to focus on whatever it is that you're doing, when you wanna concentrate, when you want to do deep work without being distracted by your phone, this is a great feature to use. Even though looking over at your phone to see what the notification is will only take two seconds, studies have shown that it will actually take about 23 minutes and 15 seconds to be exactly precise. I'll leave the study down below for you to be able to refocus back onto the task that you were doing. So if we care about productivity, if we care about being present, if we care about doing good work, then we should be distraction-free as much as we can for as long as we can. So this is why I cherish the do not disturb mode. Next is turning off most notifications. I find that this is one of the most impactful things to do. Very similar to do not disturb, it works on the same principles of limiting distractions, limiting notifications that are trying to grab your attention. The whole point is to be in control of when you want to check your phone versus your phone checking in on you and distracting you, making you feel like you're missing out on a bunch of stuff. There's only two groups of apps that will allow notifications for. The first one is messaging. So anything that is in this folder or any of my text messages. I don't use texting as like a leisure catching up with friends thing. I really prefer doing that in person pre-2020. Now I prefer phone or Zoom or FaceTiming. I don't really text my friends for fun. I think that's the point I'm trying to get. Not a lot of people are trying to find me. So if they are looking for me and messaging me on any one of these apps, I wanna be sure that I will see it. So that's the only reason why it's on. The second group of apps is anything that's like the Lyft, Uber, DoorDash type apps that I'm expecting notifications. Moving on to the apps that I use as well as how I organize my phone. If you guys remember from the previous video, my first screen was for utilities, the second screen was for productivity, and the third screen is for social media entertainment. I find that if you have a home for all of your apps, just like how you have a home for all of the items in your apartment, you know where to go to easily find it so that it takes time away from you looking for them. All that to say, be ruthless with what you allow on your your home screen or any screen for that matter. Now that it's easy to search for apps by swiping down on your screen, you don't need every single app taking up precious real estate on your phone. It's the same principle as decluttering your space to declutter your mind. Is your home screen a reflection of what's going on? 
Okay, starting with the weather app. I love how the weather app changes depending on what it's really like outside. So when it's gray and dark outside, the little square will be gray and dark. If it's nice and sunny outside, it will be this vibrant, beautiful blue color. Another thing is that I remove my Google Calendar app from the bottom bar and turn it into a widget so that I can easily access it and added a Notion shortcut to go into the team potato tasks. I love my team potato, you guys are the best. Aside from that, I changed my Gmail to Superhuman, which is a paid app that is a lot more expensive compared to a free app. But I would say getting Superhuman has been one of the more life-changing things that I've done within 2020. It's helped me hit inbox zero on a weekly basis versus before it'd be like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand unread emails. So regardless if you're using Superhuman Gmail or any emailing app out there, get in a habit of unsubscribing to things that you don't want. Imagine your zone is a sacred space. You only want things to come in that you want to come in. It's the same thing as turning off almost all notifications. You want to unsubscribe or turn off notifications to as many newsletters, as many brands, as many marketing promotions as you can to only allow in the things that you really, really want. So for the most part, every app on this screen is very standard. You have Safari and Chrome. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm using both. I mostly use Chrome on my desktop, but I use Safari on this phone and I love that Safari has this function where you can show reader view. It basically strips everything away from the article beside the text and some of the photos. And I love that you can change it to be you know the standard white view. This may be a more sepia view. It's a gray and this is black. Again, going back to not being distracted, this is a great way to not be distracted when you're surfing your web. Nested in here is all the travel, food, related apps that I have. And within Notion, this is actually a system that I set up with my team that I have yet to talk about in any one of my previous Notion videos, but I will link both of those down below just so you guys can get a feel of what this app is. It is powerful and it is amazing. So moving on to the second screen for productivity. This is one of my favorite widgets, being able to turn reminders into this little list that shows up on your screen is so, so, so clutch. So for this, I wanted something that I could look at on a daily basis to remind me of the three things that are most important to me. And over time, I'll go through and change it depending on what season I'm in, depending on what I wanna work on. So currently, the first thing is to read more. The second thing is to make time for what's essential. And the third thing is order, regularity, and discipline. This is something that I read in Turning Pro. You can very easily change it. You can very easily edit it. You can very easily add things to it. Update. Bam. Great. It is there. And then it updates the four things. You can also customize the color that you want it to be. I found that purple just looks the best with the current background that I have, but it really is up to you. Moving on, most of these apps are the same. Productivity wise, I just find that this works the best. Here's all the messaging apps, YouTube Studio, Notion, Trello. The only reason why I have Trello, it's far inferior to Notion, by the way, is because Beauty Within, we use it for some of our contracts. So it's there. On to Vibely. For those of you potatoes who already on the app, I love you guys. Basically what this app is, we created an online community together where we can share our dreams, our goals, our inspirations, our fears, secrets, anything we want, as well as do challenges together, help keep each other accountable for our goals and what we set out to do in our How to Unpotato Our Life Challenge. And if you guys have any ideas, please leave them down below. I'll also include a link for a feedback survey on Viably, on my YouTube channel, on the How to Unpotato Your Life Challenge. I would love it if you guys can give me your honest feedback on ways that I can improve to help make this experience, this channel, and these videos more helpful to you guys. Next, we have Skillshare, Kindle, and Audible. I consider these apps as replacement habits or replacement triggers or replacement apps to something like Instagram. These days when I have five to 10 minutes to kill, instead of going on Instagram and distracting myself and losing myself, I'll open Skillshare to watch five to 10 minutes of a video or read a book on Kindle for five to 10 minutes, which more often than not, 
those five to 10 minutes that you think you're gonna spend on something like Instagram or you think you're gonna spend on anything turns out to be a lot longer. And if I'm going to be spending my time that way and lose myself in something, I would rather lose myself in learning rather than on Instagram. How much smarter would you be if you replace half of your social media usage with now moving on to the very last page of the social media and entertainment same as last time the only two social media apps that i use is instagram and youtube almost everything's the same i moved music used to be on the front page i moved it to the last page it's not even something that should be here i rarely use it and if i do i can just quickly open spotify but to fill up the row i just i just put it there to quickly go over the photo editing apps that i use I replaced Unum, I think that's what it's called with Preview, just because Preview has a free version. The app that I used to edit snow, the app that I used to edit snow the most, the app that I used to edit my photos the most, oh god, I really don't like how filtered that is. I do not look like this. Okay, quickly photo edit. My favorite filters are slide three. This has a grainy warm effect. A1 sm4 r3 i never really use but i do kind of like how it's more of like a blue pinky tint so that is the photography app that i use the most and that's basically it the main reason why i don't have gaming apps or just other fun things i really do want to just keep this as i am boss you are tool and if i want to distract myself with things distract it with more meaningful things right like calling a friend reading a book on a kindle going outside for a walk instead of endlessly scrolling on Instagram or shopping online for the thousands of time and putting a bunch of thing in that cart but never checking out. To be fair, I feel like there's a time and a place for that and it's totally okay to do that every once in a while. But the frequency in which you do things, and I think you know yourself best, I know myself best, the frequency that I do that, I may have some problems. But to end on a brighter note, what matters most is that it should be a conscious choice of me choosing to do that, me choosing to lose myself on Instagram, me choosing to do all of this shopping because time spent doing that is time I could have spent doing other things. And so if I'm doing it, I wanna make sure that I'm being conscious about it. Just like how I've been trying to replace my habit of going on Instagram to going on Skillshare or reading books on Kindle in dead and with that thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring this video if you want to join me in spending your found time and downtime more efficiently and responsibly skillshare is my favorite online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes from lifestyle to productivity to entrepreneurship and art the two classes that i've been loving are find your style five exercises to unlock your creative identity by andy j pizza i love his quirkiness and how he reflects it in his designs and the lessons he creates there's also simple productivity how to accomplish Accomplish more with less by none other than Greg McGowan himself, the author of Essentialism. With the past few months being as wild as it is, no matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful because time is what we make of it. All that to say, if you'd like to take any of these classes with me, the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And with that, thank you guys so much for joining as always. I've been sat down and filmed in a while, so I started when the sun was out and now the sun is gone. Isn't this just the cutest thing? Fel actually got this for me for my birthday. It's a little potato that could sit on a couch, but it's just sitting on my shelf. It's quite bright. Okay, hug hug. Grateful for you all.